thanks for watching and for connecting. Um, this is uh, the first webinar we are starting. I would like to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Puya Degani, the president of the Nasosano Association, which is a non-profit association based in Italy. Um, we started our works and our non-profit action in 2015. And since that age, um, we build a connection through different uh, um, companies, non-profit associations, uh, and society and uh, academics. Um, this is the first webinar that we would like to start. And uh, since we are based in Italy, it's our pleasure to have uh, the president of the Italian Academy of Rhinology, which is uh, Dr. Alberto Macchi from Varese. Uh, uh, Dr. Alberto Macchi is uh, uh, very um, focused on, the, on one of the most interesting um, news, which uh, is a part of rhinology, his uh, interest in olfaction and uh, uh, nasal cytology um, lead him to reach uh, in uh, different papers and uh, congresses and also other uh, activities uh, uh, which also involve uh, the European Rhinologic Society and uh, some of uh, their um, um, availability and uh, lectures. Alberto Macchi uh, is going to talk um, today with us about uh, one of the most interesting uh, news, uh, which is a part of the rhinology field. He's going to talk uh, about the nasal cytology as a new tool for um, one in one part um, diagnostic and also how the nasal cytology would lead us for uh, not just diagnosis but also treatment. I would like to introduce uh, Alberto Macchi. Thank you Alberto for joining us uh, for this first webinar of our association. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's uh, my pleasure to participate and uh, to be the first of this uh, webinar project. And uh, I'm very happy that uh, the Italian Academy of Rhinology have the possibility to demonstrate uh, its activity and uh, the possibility to, uh, talk, uh, to speak about a new particular uh, diagnostic tool like uh, nasal cytology. The, the Italian Academy of Rhinology is, uh, born, was born uh, um, seven years ago by the, an idea of uh, Professor Paolo Castelnuovo. Professor Paolo Castelnuovo is my chief uh, and uh, is uh, one of the most important, in my opinion, of the, uh, the world rhinologist uh, of the surgery of the nose and the school base. In particular, the, the aim of the Italian Academy is uh, to increase uh, the participation uh, of our Academy of the young people, to do to the young, young people the possibility to understand, to learn, to participate uh, to other Congress and uh, course. Because um, in, in Italy, many times the, the problem is is the, the, the less presence of courses uh, and uh, this is more important to, to, to permit to participate to the um, resident, to the new specialist uh, to improve her capacity. <clears throat> now, if you, I, I, I also want to introduce uh, our next uh, Congress that will be in, uh, in, uh, in September of 2020 in Varese. And uh, the particularity of the new Congress uh, is, uh, will be many, many news. Uh, we, a part of the Congress will be due in free uh, um, uh, particularly for the video for the presentation. We want to introduce to the, to the Torino Langologist uh, the 
the, the, the capacity of uh, nasal cytology to immunotherapy to the periodics and many, many other news. So this is the, the most important thing that uh, academic, uh, an academic can, can do in this uh, particular time. Now, if, uh, if you're ready, I, I will begin my relation, my presentation. Thank you. I began? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Wait a moment. New tools for anti specialist. This is the title. Nasal cytology is uh, a, a new diagnostic tool. It's not uh, a new kind of diagnosis because uh, nasal cytology and the cytology. Um, is present uh, also in the 50 years. Uh, and, but uh, for many times, cytology is not used to, to, to use for, uh, for a diagnostic uh, for, uh, for, for the, the problem of the renal sinus uh, and uh, cytology. And um, the cytology in Italy began to have an important uh, uh, due to the, the idea of Matteo Gelardi that found uh, for this uh, an academic and in particular the Italian Academy of Nasal Cytology that uh, is, a, uh, is a branch of the Italian Academy of, uh, of uh, Rhinology. Also, this, uh, the, um, another, another important thing, we have also a review, a, a, a journal in which you can, uh, you can see all our work on the cytology and on the rhinosinusitis problem. This is the, the web, the web where, where you, can, you can find. In particular, in nasal cytology, what do? It study a part of the aural mucosa of the nose, in particular the pseudostratificated epithelium. The pseudostratificated epithelium inside the nose and the, the um, highway is similar in the nose, in the trachea, in the lung. And we are looking to, to, to study the modification, to study if there is some uh, particular cell inside, uh, inside of this epithelium. In fact, the, you see this, um, this is a, a normal aspect of the epithelium. This is a particular cellular specimen that we made with, uh, with, with, uh, with cytology. And uh, you can see the, the cell, the ciliated cell, the, the, the cilia, the nucleus. But in a normal epithelium, you can also see other kind of cells like this. Particularly, you can also sell sometimes a uh, neutrophil and eosinophil. If you see one of this kind of cell, it's not a pathology, it's only, it's only normal. But the big number of this, this cell can do a particular kind of pathology. But how to do this, uh, these tools? <clears throat> now the cytology, first of all, I have to keep this gene and the specimen I keep with a particular uh, device. Simple. I bring the some mucus uh, uh, on the, the mucosa. I put this mucus on the uh, uh, vitrino, and then I I um, colored this, uh, and then I see the the specimen on the microscope. This process I need to, to do this process till forty minutes. It's not. Uh, uh, a big time, but not a little time. But from the, um, to keep the, the specimen and to read, this is the time necessary to process, to color, and to see the, the specimen. This is what I need to do in nasal cytology. It's very, it's very simple. I also say that nasal cytology is economic, is mm, simple to do, repeatable. In particular, what we need, we need some words, and we use for this uh, the color of the technologies make room and We need some uh, water, we need uh, nasal speculum and the probe to keep uh, 
the, the, the mucosa and some slide in where I put the, the cell. How to keep the specimen? The specimen I keep with, I say, this is a rhinoprobe, rhinoprobe in particular, as you see, a little spoon that can bring some, um, some, some cell from the nose. I use this, um, this kind of specimen from uh, children to adults. It's very simple, it's not uh, invasive, it's not in the, there is no pain. You see in the detail uh, to kind of the specimen, to kind of, of uh, device. Also to keep the, the cell, I also to do, to, to ask to the patients uh, like this, to put uh, instead a, a, a film, the, the mucus of the nose. Also, I can also use a washing and keep the washing and centrifuge the washing and then analyze the cell. Also, you can use a brushing, but in this kind of brushing is, uh, for in my opinion, is invasive. Sometimes you can, uh, you can provoke some epistasis, for example, and this is not useful to, to read also the vitrine under the presence of, uh, um, of the nasal cell. In the children, sometimes I use uh, a little uh, of, uh, of cotton fioc, like uh, uh, cotton, and I bring this on the specimen. I not, uh, not like very much this kind of uh, device. I prefer uh, rhinoprobe. As I say, I use the rhinoprobe from the children to the old, uh, to the old people. In particular, you can do this kind of, of uh, exam from uh, uh, one day of the born to the, the end of the life. At, uh, in particular, we have many studies in, uh, in children at the board to analyze what is the characteristic of the, the nasal cytology. And this kind, many, many, many patients, we just see the presence, for example, of nostril or other kind of cell, like neutrophil or mast cell, probably keep from the mother. The scraping, uh, as I say, is the best thing that you, uh, that you can do where I keep the, the specimen. In particular, I keep the specimen from the, uh, the low part of the turbinate, the lower turbinate in the central part of the turbinate because this part is uh, the, uh, the part more with the more presence of the cell. In, um, we are now doing uh, some study also to keep uh, the specimen from the middle turbinate, from the tuba, from the, the, the part of the tuba, and also from the, com the osteometrical complex. And we are now to analyze if there is some difference from this part of the nose. This is important also to analyze if the, the, the difference is present or we are necessary not only to do one side of the specimen, but more than one, uh, keep the, the cell from the nose. Then I had to prepare uh, the specimen. I put the specimen on a slide. It's important to put the specimen in a, in a part of the slide till one centimeter of the, in a, in the central part of the slide because if you put the specimen in all uh, the slide, it's more difficult to analyze uh, when, when you have to, to study the, the kind of cell. In particular, this is a, uh, I put the, the cell uh, in the central part, as you see here, and uh, I had and then the necessary is to have a quantity of cell to have 50 fields to analyze, it's important because we have standardized the analysis of the, of the specimen on, on the slide. This is a, how you can see a specimen when I live on, on the slide, in particular, the fixation of the specimen. We do the fixation with the exposure to air. We don't, we don't uh, I don't use, uh, any kind of fixation, chemical fixation in, in our activity. Then how to, to prepare 
I have to meet it to, to color the specimen. One is a rapid meet, and this is a kind of uh, coloration. You go, as you can see, it's uh, only 30 seconds to complete the coloration of the specimen. But uh, in, I prefer to do the classical Megrum and Gims, that is uh, due to, uh, to put the specimen, the slide, uh, in uh, the first, uh, in the Megrum and pool for three minutes. Then uh, Megrum uh, with uh, evaluation one-to-one to water, in particular, uh, demineralized water. It's important, the kind of water. Because uh, the water, and uh, inside the water you can find uh, the water keep from the um, from the, the from our uh, our home probably some residue of uh, ferrous uh, or other kind of uh, precipitate. Then after six minutes, I put in water in the mineralized water for one minute, and then for thirty minutes, I put inside the gimsa. The gimsa is a diluation of one part of gimsa and the 10 parts of water. Then uh, this kind, uh, the, the time necessary is 40 minutes to analyze the, the slide. This is an example of what you can see in, uh, in the slide. In particular, this is a normal specimen with normal cell, with normal CT cell. You can see the cilia, you can see the supranuclear stria. It's important, the supranuclear stria, because the stria uh, say me that the, the cell is vitality, the energy to the cell. In particular, I cannot see the stria in the viral infection or in bacterial infection. And this, the absence of stria can say me that there is some problem in the cell. <clears throat> After I prepare, I finished to prepare the slide, I put some uh, um, balsam, Canada balsam, and the, uh, another slide over one to protect the, the cell. And this kind of, this, the, this, this slide is ready to be read, to be read. So then I read the, the specimen on a microscopy, an optical microscopy. I use a particular uh, tools to, to, to put inside the, the, the analysis of the cell. And uh, I conserve all the specimen in my archives. It's important because it's, if necessary, you can bring again or you can control the, speci the specimen. Now, how to read the specimen? As I say, I use uh, an optical microscope. In particular, I use, I use three magnification. The first is 10 to see if the specimen is right. Then I can see with a 40 uh, magnification, and in this kind, I can just also see many, many cells. But it is important to see the cell at 100 magnification, so you can see. This is an example. Uh, what you can uh, you can see with uh, ten uh, magnific magnification you can see the cell it's difficult to understand what kind of cell but I only say that the specimen is right at the forty is just a good uh, um, magnification of the specimen because you can also see many particularity of the cell of the cilia cell but if you analyze in the detail all the cell. 100 uh, magnification is the best because you can see more the cilia, you can see the, the nucleus, uh, the sovranuclear stria, it's better, this kind. As I say, how many area I had to, to read to have a diagnosis? Uh, and this, uh, in particular, the, uh, the Italian Academy of Nazi Solid decide to standardize this method, and it's necessary to see uh, 50 microscopic files, in particular 25 in one booth 
and 25 in the other booth. So why, why 50 fields? It's like a radiologist. The radiologist uh, don't see only one image of a radiologic study, but the radiologist study every image of a radiologic, like uh, uh, TC, like uh, uh, MRI, or uh, in every kind of uh, radiologic style. So also, no, no, we, we, we analyze 20, 50 fields. This is an example of the field. I see this file fields, and in this field, when I, I see a, a field, I sign in this tabella how is the quantity of the xenophil, mast cell, lymphocyte, bacteria, spore, ciliated cells. So at the end, I can give a, 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 a diagnosis, particularly. I see if I only see uh, one to five eosinophil, I, I say that the diane is only plus one, one plus, but if the eosinophil is more than 30, I can see that there is many, many eosinophil in my, my specimen, in my, in my slide. And what kind of cell I can see in the specimen, in the, the, the slide? Uh, also of the natural of the normal cell of the ciliated epithelium, I can find uh, eosinophil, and this is the how can see the eosinophil. The eosinophil is characterized by two nucleus, and the cytoplasma is uh, uh, this is of kind of color is more uh, more red. Lymphocyte, big cell with a big nucleus, macrophage. A mast cell, the mast cell is characterized by many uh, degranulated uh, grain inside the nucleus, neutrophils. This is also, I can see bacteria. This is how I can see bacteria. I cannot say what kind of bacteria, but if I say in my slide many, many bacteria, it's uh, also necessary to do an RSM, in particular, to do a um, bacteriologic exam and to do an, also antibiogram to understand what is the best kind of uh, therapy I can do. This is another specimen, this is another, another slide of, uh, of bacteria, or you can see also this kind of bacteria, this is bacteria inside of a cell many, many bacteria, or you can also, like this, this particular uh, um, formation of bacteria, like streptococcus, for example, this is another, another example. But also, I can find spores inside. In many patients, I find spore. We find uh, um, often uh, spores uh, inside the specimen from children because children hasn't uh, sniffed the nose. So there is a, a condition to the spore to proliferate and also to give some effect. This is a mycosis. We can find this mycosis in particular kind of patients, uh, immunodepressed patients, for example. We also, we often find this kind of uh, slide. This is a particular, this is a, a paint of, of uh, how I can see in, uh, in with, with the microscope, uh, for example, eosinophils, uh, municipal cell, bacteria, eosinophils. It's a, it's a very amazing uh, kind of, uh, of uh, microscopic uh, view, uh, mycotic rhinitis. Uh, and in particular, this is the kind of uh, diagnosis uh, that I can do with uh, nasal cytology, from uh, the allergic rhinitis to bacteria to non-allergic rhinitis or uh, non-allergic rhinitis mast cell rhinitis like NARES or mast cell pathology or also normal uh, specimen. 
this is how many of uh, uh, rhinitis I can uh, I have, and in particular the nasal cytology analyze the specific kind of rhinitis, like allergic that is uh, intermittent or persistent, uh, like a new diagnosis of uh, area, but in particular non-allergic rhinitis, uh, and this kind of rhinitis is called cellular rhinitis, because it's characterized by the present, uh, for example, of neutrophil, eosinophil, mastocytis, eosinophil, and mastocytis. And in particular, this is the presence of kind of cell can give me the possibility to analyze it to have a particular diagnosis. The diagnosis is very fundamental of uh, our activity in the rhinosinusitis and the pathology of the nose, because the first therapy of the rhinosinusitis is a medical treatment. This is important because uh, surgery is not the, the first treatment of rhinosinusitis. I use, I use surgical treatment when the medical treatment is not useful or when I find some anatomical alteration or some possibility that medical treatment cannot uh, give me some, um, some therapy. The surgically, after surgically, is need always to do again medical treatment. So this is an important uh, take home message. The surgery is not the treatment of the nasal of the cellular rhinitis, for example, but uh, is not the first uh, first term, the gold standard of the therapy of rhinosinusitis. Uh, Another important. Uh, I'm, I'm just. Okay. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, stress more with this, uh, the last thing that you said. Uh, recently, many yeah. people and um, many studies are focusing uh, much more uh, on, um, on diagnosis before treatment. How, um, how much would you like to stress uh, our colleagues, uh, not just the the immunologist or the allergologist, but also the ENT, the rhinologist, how much would you like to suggest the use of the nasal cytology instead of just imaging and first-line treatment? The diagnosis, as you, as you say, it's very important. The diagnosis is not only nasal cytology. The diagnosis is a particular um, there are some particular steps. First of all, the anamnesis of the patients is very important. Then the endoscopy. Endoscopy gives me many information of, uh, of the situation of the nose, of the characteristic of the nose, and in many, in many patients is, uh, is the, the only exam necessary. The uh, radiological exam is after endoscopy. It's not the first line of diagnosis, but the second line. Because uh, uh, radiology, I do the radiology when the, the therapy doesn't uh, go well. But it's also important to understand if uh, in the nose, in the, the airway, there is some problem of allergic. So the execution of uh, um, allergic diagnosis like screen prick test or molecular uh, analysis is very important because before to do a nasal cytology, I need to say if the patient is allergic or not. Okay, this is very important. So, nasal cytology is the first step of, of the diagnosis. But all this, uh, um, this step of diagnosis is very important because. The therapy must be tailored on the patients, like surgery, also the medical treatment. Yes. And this uh, is the, 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 end point, the point that I want to stress to our colleague. First of all, better diagnosis to do a better medical or even surgical treatment. Okay? Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Another, another important uh, um, thing that I want to do about nasal cytology is that with nasal cytology, 
I can also give a prognostic index of release relapse of the pathology because we have we, we can stand up we can also give some type of the patients in particularly with uh, this particular score that analyze uh, first of all the cytologic uh, presence of cell but also the presence of uh, for example sensibility to asthma, asthma allergy or asthma and the sensibility to asthma and I give a number to the presence of that kind of uh, characteristic. And the score can give me some information. In particular, if the score is, uh, under, is lower than three, probably the, the index of relapse is very, very low. But if the score is more than seven, this is very important to have a high risk of relapse. This is important not also for the, the, the anti colleague, the anti, but also for the patient. Because when the patient asks you, how is the, the probability that rhinosinusitis can return or the relapse of my rhinosinusitis, it's important to give him some more information. This is a work that was published by Matteo Gelardi and other colleagues about the uh, uh, index of relapse. And you can read this on the Journal of Biological Regulation and Homeostatic Agents. This is in particular the, the clinical score, as you see uh, before, uh, it's a classification and the we have give some number to this kind of uh, characteristic of the patient on the number cell. For example, if you see there is many eosinophilum cell, the index is, uh, is very high. So I can give three kind of uh, perniotic index like low, medium, and high, based on the characteristic of the patients. Another thing that I can I can find with another cytology it's also biofield because with other cytology it's possible to identify the biofilm it's simple to do and this is not the first thing that I we, we find when we study nasal uh, specimen but uh, we understand that this kind of imaging uh, is biofilm after some years. Uh, to study about the uh, slide of cytology. In particular, the characteristic of the biofilm is the color, is the channel color, and inside you can see this kind of blue color that inside you can find some more bacteria or spores. And in, in particular, this is very important when you can, when you, when you have a rhinosinusitis that uh, the antibiotic cannot uh, uh, act and uh, you can give to the patients uh, the necessary to do other kind of therapy for example to disrupt the biofilm with nasal wash or with uh, an acetylcysteine this is the, the two main therapy that we use of biofilm this for example, a kind of biofilm is a, a, a big magnification inside of which you can see the bacteria also inside the cell. It's, um, it's called internal uh, biofilm. Another characteristic, another particularity that I can see with another cytology, it's also to see the ciliar movement of the cell. In this particular uh, analysis, uh, it's important to see immediately our uh, slide because I had to see the slide with uh, a particular kind of, uh, of microscope or also with optical microscope. And I, I can analyze how is the movement of the cell and how, how, ma how many times the movement is present. We consider normal if the movement is more five minutes, for example. And uh, we consider normal if the movement is, uh, um, is not... Um, uh, uh, oh, I don't, I don't remember the, the name. It is, is synchronized with the other, with the other cell. 
For this, uh, I want to see you a little uh, movie about the nasal cell, and you can see the rhythm of the cell, you can see the, the music, the cell seem to play a bacteria or some instrument, musical instrument. This movie is done by a fellow of, uh, of uh, Matteo of Matteo during the master. You can see how the cell, you can see how the cilia is the, the beat of the cilia, the movement of the cilia. How intensive is, for example, this movement. This is important because the, the cilia movement is the first mechanism of defense of our body. In particular, many children have the absence of this movement, and this is the children that have many, uh, many uh, infections of the upper and lower airway, for example. It's very amusing that this, uh, this movie. Okay, again, I want to take what the take home message of this uh, uh, relation, this is my presentation. Nasal cytology is fast and easy diagnostic tool, low cost tool. In Italy, we spend to do this kind of tools uh, less than four euro for, uh, for the material that I have to use. It is easy to do. It's not invasive, but it's simple to do, as I say, from children to adult. It's useful for a prognostic method for the index of relapse to understand if, for example, the therapy of the patient with the allergic patient is going well, if the therapy of the patient with rhinosinusitis to analyze the kind of cell in particular patients. This is the the, the important message that I want uh, to take home. I hope uh, all well for you. Uh, if there is some question about my presentation, I'm ready to, to answer to your question. Thank you so much, Alberto, for your presentation and uh, especially for the, the, um, the kit that you're using, that you're suggesting for uh, a correct step-by-step uh, -step, uh, procedure. Um, I would like to ask you a few questions. Um, first of all, um, as uh, previously asked, um, first of all, would you like to suggest to our rhinologist, to our ENT colleagues, uh, uh, to take in consideration during their uh, uh, examination at the hospital, at the office, uh, this procedure? And how would you like to suggest the step-by-step -step procedure? Like, would you like to introduce yourself first and then uh, um, start with the endoscopy, then do the um, nasal cytology? Or would you like to put a flowchart when you're in front of your patient. So this will allow you to have a, a much easier and faster diagnosis at the end of the whole examination. And this is the first question. Then I have a question from our colleague Ilse that is asking, what would be the main indications for nasal cytology? Okay. Another cytology, as I say, is not the first time that I do to my patients in the hospital or in my, in my office. It's the tools that complete our diagnosis. I prefer, first of all, as I say, to uh, speak to the patients, to keep some information about uh, his pathology, first of all, the anatomy. Then I say, for me, endoscopy is the first tools necessary to understand more, more things. And I do the cytology if I say, if I, I know if the patient is an allergic or non-allergic. It's important. For example, if the patient 
doesn't have a, a, an analysis of allergic, it's not useful to do cytology. Or even in, a, in allergic patients uh, during the period of the, the allergic season. Because I, it's not necessary, I, I can find many as in office and it's not useful to have a diagnosis. But in a period, not seasonal period, it's more better to do the, the nasal cytology. So it's the, fir the first line for me, the nasal cytology. Necessary, but not the first line. When and uh, how kind of patients? Uh, I do nasal cytology in the patients uh, that uh, have negative a patient that have the problem of, uh, hyper of nasal mucosa hypertrophic. Mm -hmm. I do nasal cytology before do a, a turbinoplastic or a surgery because if I find uh, cellular rhinitis, uh, it's not uh, useful uh, to do a turbinoplastic because uh, the turbinoplastic uh, cannot give me a, a better result. The first is to treat the patients, and then after the treatment of the patient with, for example, a non-allergic eosinophic rhinitis, uh, I can do the turbinoplastic, but I compensate the, the eosinophil. Okay? This is very, very important. This is patient. also for the patient that uh, I have to analyze the nasal motility, the ciliar motility. The patient uh, is necessary, uh, patient with no infection of the nose, for example. No treatment uh, of the nose. It's important to do nasal cytology without the use of any kind of drugs like antihistaminics or steroid because alterated this the kind of cell. In fact, I said to the patient that in the 10 days before to do the exam, I cannot use never inside the nose, but hypertonic solution or the congestion kind of drugs because can modify the cellular uh, inside the nose. This is the indication of nasal cytology. Great. Um, I have also another question. Um, what's the, the Italian Academy of Rhinology um, providing to the young colleagues and to the um, senior colleagues and to the international community uh, for um, improve their skills um, like uh, there's uh, any kind of um, congresses and uh, uh, live examination or other um, um, lessons that should be available in the next uh, 2019 and 2020 provided uh, or under auspices of the Italian Academy of Rhinology. One of the, the aim of the Italian Academy of Rhinology is uh, to do uh, some courses uh, about uh, not only cytology, but also uh, about uh, the exam necessary for our activity, like uh, rhinomanometry, like olfactometry, like uh, also endoscopy. Because, uh, for example, in Italy, not all the anti-specialists use the endoscope to do an exam to the patients. And uh, in our clinic, in our school, uh, we say that uh, without endoscopy, it's not possible to do a better diagnosis to our patients. We also improve the collaboration with the international society. For example, uh, two months ago, the uh, ERS European Rhinology Society uh, approved the um, we, we, we approved the, the presence of the Italian Academy of Rhinology in the next Congress, and uh, we would like to organize the Congress of the a particular Congress of ERS next year, before probably of our Congress. And we have now a new collaboration, for example, for the third uh, 
uh, and T specialist. I also uh, have a collaboration with uh, the Dresden University because uh, my particular friend is uh, Thomas Hummel. It's one of the best, uh, uh, most, most famous specialist in uh, smell problem. This is the activity of the Italian Academy. But also our uh, journal, I wanted to sponsorize my, this journal. In particular, if you have some article or some communication or uh, case report, uh, we will be happy to, to publish this, uh, your activity, for example. It's a young journal, and uh, it, uh, two years ago we found the journal. We are uh, attended to be the, an impact factor, but as you say, it's necessary four or five years to have an impact factor. Exactly. Um, but it's necessary for many, many words to publish. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I have another um, question from Matteo Di Bari. I guess it's uh, an Italian colleague. And he's asking, how long does it take to do a complete nasal cytology examination? The time to do um, a complete exam is uh, one hour. In fact, in our activity, when I, I prefer to do in a day many, many specimens, many slides of cytology, and then I read the, the specimen, the, the slide, in the afternoon or the next day. And because it's very complicated to do the, the analysis for each patient and say the, the, the result, the time is very long. If it's necessary to have an emergency, but in this kind there is no emergency, you can use a fast coloration, but the fast coloration gives us not a very brilliant uh, kind of cell, so I prefer the traditional mixture. Perfect. Well, well, Alberto, I would like to uh, thank you. Oh, I, I have... Uh, uh, oh, he's uh, thanking you for your, uh, for your uh, answer. Um, Deroberto, I would like to um, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, I would also like to congratulate you for the amazing efforts you're putting uh, uh, since your annunciation as the president of the Italian Academy of Rhinology uh, because of the advertisement and uh, many newsletters you're putting, all the effort you're putting. Uh, I would like also to um, once again uh, um, uh, express uh, how much uh, um, is going on uh, through the interaction between uh, the, um, uh, the um, all our allergy and immunology colleagues uh, between uh, uh, the, the collaboration and the interaction between the ENT, the um, pneumologist and the allergologist. And since that, all this cooperation uh, uh, lead us uh, to a new perspective. Um, I would like to um, congratulate you and to thank you for being with us for this first webinar. Uh, and I would like to um, announce uh, the next webinar that is going to be the 15th of February, same 3 p.m. Rome time. Uh, the next speaker is going to be uh, from uh, from uh, Brescia and uh, Alberto Schreiber is going to talk about uh, uh, another different uh, perspective which is the surgical one and um, uh, I just would like to, to thank the Italian Academy of Rhinology for supporting us and our activities so thank you again for uh, bring you uh, for bring uh, your uh, participation for this webinar and uh, last but not least i would like also to thank our scientific uh, um, supports uh, which uh, are the um, european rhinologic society juniors and the junior members of the iaki um, plus the world skull base foundation um, 
just uh, the last point, uh, uh, Alberto, I would like um, to thank you again for being with us uh, and, uh, and I hope that you will be able uh, for a next uh, Congress in the next part uh, of, the, of the 2019. Thank you again for watching this first webinar. Thank you, Alberto, and uh, I hope uh, to have you as soon as possible in the next webinar. Thank you all. Goodbye. Thank you very much to everybody. Thank you very much, uh, Puyo Degani. And uh, this is the first, but I uh, hope uh, in the future to have uh, many other collaboration with uh, your uh, association, NASUSAM. It's important uh, to have uh, collaboration with other uh, association. And uh, the, the sponsor of the Italian Academy of Rhinology to NASUSAM is the future. And not uh, and why not to do many other things again without with uh, with that. Everybody. Thank okay. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye.